Sec IC. Welcome. I changed the order. So here's tonight's agenda, Sec uh, the 101, which I'll do here shortly. Mr. Brenton's going to do the news. Uh, we have Adam with uh, Pie Hole and uh, Mr. Cooper with uh, Advanced Wireshark Techniques using the PCAPs from B-Sides. <coughs> okay, what is Sec IC? We're uh, unaffiliated collection of informal meetups, like line of security professionals, yada, yada, yada. We meet fourth Wednesday of every month right here, uh, and we are a registered 501c3 nonprofit. Um, I guess the other thing to point is this is a you know kind of non-vendor setting. If we have sponsors, uh, we don't allow them to speak uh, in front of everybody. Disclaimer: uh, We're educational. We don't condone any illegal activity um, presented here tonight or other nights. Um, use your best judgment. Also, uh, don't be an ass. Board members have final say. What that is. Uh, if you have any issues, please see one of us. I'll show you who we are. Also, we try and keep things PG-13. I usually blow it out of the water. We did look this up. You can say shit as many times as you want, uh, but the F word only one time. And apparently you can have some nudity, uh, but please enjoy. <laughs> please, please avoid that part. <coughs> this one we stole from SecDSM. We stole from SecAC, and that's the, uh, the concept of challenge ideas, not people. So uh, don't, don't get in fights, please. This is in the front, party in the back, so this is where we talk. There's pizza. If you're going to have a conversation, try and keep it in the back and keep it down because it's hard to hear. No sponsors for this month. If you want a sponsor, hit us up. There's a link. Here's the uh, board members. Brandon. Uh, Brandon's not here. Every time I see that picture, it cracks me up. Uh, URLs up there, secic.org, email, contact at secic.org, which hits all of us. There's our Twitter handle and uh, our YouTube link. So I updated this this morning. There are 112 people in our Slack channel now. <laughs> so over 111 InfoSec professionals. Uh, if you look at our website, there's a, a link for Slack. You can sign up and it'll let you in and fun times will be had. Uh, upcoming events, uh, so this this weekend is B-Sides KC. Uh, also, I don't know if anybody's going to FS Isaac. I don't think there's a lot of financial services. I know there's a bunch from Des Moines going down there. I'll be speaking at that one. Uh, ThoughtCon in Chicago. For those who are going, it's at the same location as last year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Please don't tell me. <laughs> that won't matter, yeah. It'll be afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think Zach will be there working, working security. There's a few folks from Des Moines going as well. Uh, Circle City Con at the end of May. There will be a whole crap ton of people headed out there. Uh, if you're interested, there's an Events and Cons channel, which is shared with SecDSM, uh, and there's a ride-sharing channel, although they s those kind of merge at the big events. Uh, scholarship. So we are um, whoops, pseudo officially a chapter of SecDSM. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> ask us next week. Um, so we join with their scholarship program. So the, the point is, if there's a black badge that's won at a conference, we have black badges for ThoughtCon, GERCon, Circle City Con, De DEFCon, Wild West Hack and Fest. I feel like we're missing one in there. CypherCon. Uh, anyway, a bunch of them. Um, if you are a student or you know need help financially with getting to an event, then uh, we have these available. Uh, there's a um, scholarship link on SecDSM's website to kind of apply for those. Next month's agenda, you should really submit a talk, please. Uh, this month I'm actually super elated because it will be the first time that both talks are done by non-board members, which is awesome. <laughs> Up next. Merch monger. Here, take this one. There we go. How about now? Oh, mic check, mic check. Can you hear me? There we go. Uh, merch. We will be discussing. Uh, we have board meeting tonight, so we'll be discussing uh, probably another run of shirts. So keep your eyes out for that. Um, outside of that, we have the wonderful patches. I'm not. I'm not tied to anything. I can walk in. I can van a white. 
the patches, five dollar donation there. And we have uh, stickers for anyone whose first time it is. And the blockchains, of course, at a suggested donation of five dollars. And yeah, you gotta <laughs> gotta do a successful blockchain attack to get them out. Um, outside of that, yeah, just keep your eyes open for shirts and it should be coming up soon. Boop. Oh, wait, no, that's me already. That's you. There you go. All right, can you hear me? Okay. So, like Greg mentioned earlier, we are a 5013C uh, nonprofit. We do uh, have 100% transparency in our funds. So, last month, uh, we ended the month with uh, around $858. Uh, our expenses, like most months, uh, pizza was $125. Uh, we purchased some new um, AV equipment. One, uh, we purchased a mic, we purchased batteries, we purchased the warranty on the mic, a uh, case for the mic. Uh, I can't remember, I think there was one or something else as well. So total expenses were $265. Uh, income, we had $17 in uh, donations and merchandise. Uh, we did have a sponsor, uh, B Sides Iowa. Thanks, uh, B Sides Iowa. Thanks for everyone who showed up at B Sides Iowa's previous weekend. So uh, the total income was three hundred and seven dollars. So that puts us today at around nine hundred dollars. There's our current graph of where we have. Well, yeah, we're going back up again, which is good. Uh, there's the current graph. Uh, the other uh, big financial uh, thing we did this past month was we filed our taxes for the first time. Uh, so we did the uh, taxes and we also did the uh, biannual state filing. So we're still recognized as a 501c3 that we still know about and uh, uh, we'll go through that. And again, uh, like Greg said, if you or your company, uh, you or your company want to sponsor, um, there's a link on the website or you can come grab one of us and we can talk about uh, those sponsorship sponsorship opportunities and uh, all the great uh, uh, perks that come with it. <laughs> all right. All right. So news. Uh, first item. Uh, I feel like this one's kind of beating a dead horse, but because it's been brought up here before, but uh, Mond uh, Mondelay, I said Mondala before, I guess it's Mondelay, suing uh, Zurich Insurance after they denied a $100 million claim. Uh, big big takeaway, and I think a lot of people are kind of glossing over it, is that Mondelay doesn't have uh, a cyber security insurance policy or cyber insurance policy. So they have an all-risk policy that they claim uh, covers the physical and indirect expenses related to computer failures. Um, Mondelay claims that Zurich denied the claim based on hostile or warlike action. Uh, remember, this is related to not Petya. Uh, so the, the claim is that because the Five Eyes governments came out and said this was Russia, um, that now uh, Zurich and uh, Hiscox is the other is the other one. Um, that's what that one is in England. Uh, similar situation. They denied uh, DLA Piper's claim. So um, uh, it's interesting though because as intelligence, uh, you know, nation state intelligence agencies do, they said, Russia did it, but we won't tell you how we know that. So um, I think it's gonna be interesting if it does go to court, because I think that's gonna be, that's gonna put the burden on them to prove that Russia, that it was a state sponsored attack. And um, who knows, who knows what's gonna happen. It probably, probably won't, probably get settled, both of them. So speaking of uh, security, well, I don't know. I don't know what my segue was. I forgot it, and Greg's got a different view. So I can't read my notes. Anyway, Facebook screws up basic security concepts again. So this was actually released last month um, where they had a bunch of uh, passwords that they were storing in plain text. Um, but they said it was uh, tens of thousands of Instagram accounts. Um, and what they did is they actually buried it in the morning that the Mueller report was uh, was reviewed or re was released. So. Uh, Friday morning, I think it was Friday last week, they uh, they came out and, and said, oh yeah, uh, it's actually millions of Instagram users. So um, I feel like, you know, Facebook has just been screwing up left and right. And you can't read the caption over there, but under the little Polaroid, it says this camera probably has better security than Facebook. So uh, speaking of major companies screwing up breach, uh, breaches, uh, Microsoft, uh, story broke on TechCrunch on a Sunday after Microsoft sent notice to some users. Uh, they claimed a limited subset of their consumer email accounts were compromised. 
Uh, that's just like the, the Hotmail, Outlook, uh, and one other one, like MSN.com or something. Uh, none of the corporate accounts. But um, they claimed they were notified, uh, claimed that the hackers only had access to a folder name, subject lines, and recipients. Uh, Motherboard then reported that they had a source that showed them screenshots indicating that it was a high-privileged user uh, with access to calendar, birth date, profile, mailbox, folder stats, admin center, and logon history. Um, they also claimed that the breach lasted for six months. Microsoft claims it was only three months. Uh, Microsoft then came out after Motherboard's article and said, oh yeah, so that did kind of happen. Um, they clarified, and I quote, around 6% of a small number of impacted customers uh, had email content exposed, but they still, they refused to say any, any actual numbers. So, and I think that's still true today. Um, speaking of how not to acknowledge a data breach or why an investigative journalist ambushed our executive suite during our quarterly earnings call, WebPro, uh, third largest IT service provider in India. Um, turns out that they have been breached for a while and uh, the, the suspected nation state has been using their uh, networks to attack their customers because they have trusted access because they're an MSP. Uh, came out uh, late last year, I think there was a CERT uh, release saying that APTs are doing this, be careful. Um, so anyway, uh, they didn't respond. Uh, Brian Krebs broke the article. They didn't respond in the three days he gave them. Um, and then they came out, I think, before the quarterly earnings report and said something, uh, there were some factual inaccuracies in his article, didn't expand. Um, so in the quarterly earnings call, the CEO told the investors that there were elements of the story that were incorrect um, and that the breach was le uh, limited to a few uh, employees, that it was handled, moved on. Um, so at that point, uh, Krebs actually put a question into the queue. So he actually called in to their, their quarterly earnings report and, and ambushed them and said, hey, like, what's, what's going on? What's, what are the mistakes in my report? Please tell me. And so they started, uh, kind of bumbled around and, and read a prepared statement and said they'd talk to him uh, offline afterwards. So um, kind of interesting, uh, interesting tactic, uh, maybe not the nicest thing to do, but, um, you know, he was pretty fed up that they were kind of trying to, trying to uh, you know, brush it under the rug and um, kind of went. Kind of went, uh, you know, on attack mode there, but uh, it is kind of a big deal. There, there are some uh, pretty big name companies that were being that are being targeted by the the Wipro engine crushers. So, um, yeah, this one I really like this one. So, uh, read the headline: Source code of Carbonac Trojan found on Virus Total. It's been there for two years, and it was just discovered like last week. So, uh. FireEye researcher Nick Carr was really digging in on Carbonac. Uh, Carbonac's a, um, a banking trojan used by Fin7. Again, I don't have all my notes, so I don't remember exactly the details, but I think it was like, uh, has been tied to like 1 billion in uh, euros, um, uh, you know, spent mitigating attacks and whatnot. Um, they've been researching it, and uh, lo and behold, two years ago on virus total from a Russian IP, there were two archives uploaded. Turns out it's the source code for Carbonac. So uh, they've been really digging into that. They've got a whole series. They're calling this Carbonac Week, and it's branded like Shark Week. So uh, they're like really digging into the source code. It's, it's good stuff. Uh, check it out. So that's that's on uh, Virus Total, or um, I'm sorry, FireEyes website. So uh, they're not, uh, that, that group is no longer using Carbonac. They're using uh, Cobalt Strike, I, I believe now, but it's, it's still a really good look at how they were operating at the time. So jobs. Anybody, uh, anybody hiring? Anybody looking and want to put yourself out out of the mercy of the the grid? Nobody going once, going twice. All right. Um, let's see. Adam's talk is in 15 minutes, and till then, get some pizza, get a drink.